ecclesiastical locations are places Drew can often pick up items with huge historical provenance and he's received an invitation to visit a cathedral 280 miles north in Edinburgh. Edinburgh is renowned for its rich history and Georgian architecture. In the heart of the city is St Mary's Episcopal Cathedral. Boasting stunning neo-Gothic features, the church is run day to day by Vice Provost John McClucky. He's hoping that Drew takes an interest in some of the treasures they're looking to clear out of the cathedral's vault. St so Mary's Cathedral was built in 1879 and was, was completed in a short space of six years. Although one or two of the major features of the building were added later, the two distinctive spires in the, in the west side of the cathedral, which can be seen from every corner of the, of the city pretty much. It is, in fact, the biggest religious building built in Scotland since the Reformation. Many of the, the features you can see of the cathedral are part of the original design, like the high altar, the, the organ, the woodwork. The building is full of ecclesiastical pieces with great provenance, as they've been long associated with the church. We're off to meet John and they've given us a call, they've got a few things they want to want to clear out because this sounds really old fashioned, sounds like the start of a joke. They need they need money for the church roof. <laughs> Edinburgh Zoo, we've been there. We have. They let you out. We haven't really had the, the pleasure of dealing with an antiques dealer here before. And it would be really interesting to see what, 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 what an expert eye can, can tell us about, about some of the items that we have here. Hello. Welcome. How you do? Nice to meet you. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm John. I am T. I'm John. Good to meet you. Well, thanks for well, having us. Well, yeah. my pleasure. Yeah. This is huge. Yeah, it's quite a space. This is quite an amazing space, isn't yeah. it? I have to say that this is one of the grandest religious buildings we've been asked into to buy things from. It was designed by one of the absolute preeminent architects of the time, Gilbert Scott, a genius, an absolute, you know, an absolute design genius. It's incredible, one man's vision and this pure reformed Gothic taste that the building is in. The excitement of finding new things and learning about new design and, and, and who designed this and who designed that and how is that manufactured. It keeps me fresh. It really does. I love doing it. So a few things to show you in here. So we have a few pieces in the, in the safe here. OK. If I pull this open for you. Here is damaged, but it's... um. It's rather not very ornate crucifix, but as you oh, can see, nice. it suffered a fair bit of oh, damage yeah, over the years. That's a shame. The figures come off. This is a <clears throat> this is a rather interesting historical piece, really. It was donated to the cathedral by former Bishop of Edinburgh. Oh, look at that! It's a very, according to the description on the back, it's a rather ancient icon of. Um, it's not St George, although it's a little like him. It's, a, it's one of the, probably one of the military saints um, from the Byzantine period. But oh, hang on, we've got a name up here, haven't we? Saint Demetrius, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. We're not quite sure exactly who, but the inscription on the back, bought from a Russian church during the Red Revolution in 1917 by a Greek merchant. Mm, mm, mm. It's all a bit sketchy, isn't it? Very sketchy. Yeah. Very sketchy. Yeah. Antique dealer Drew Pritchard is at St Mary's Cathedral in the Scottish capital of Edinburgh. There's always been a trade in ecclesiastical artefacts, whether they are religiously important or, from my side of things, decorative and useful. He's been shown to the building's vault by Vice Provost John McLucky, where he's found a piece of Russian ecclesiastic art and is seeing if there's a deal to be done. 
His face there, look at that face there. You can see the lance coming through there. Mm, for which reason we probably wouldn't want to have it on show, but it's, uh, it's if you want to sell it. Very precious. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think we need to look into that, and, um, given its given its provenance and being a donation from a former bishop. But yeah, if it comes on the open market, I'll be definitely be interested. Yeah, That's okay, sure. we'll certainly be that and line we'll, because it's um, so. But yeah, yeah, you need to yeah. check that we, you can. We would. If we you would, can, yeah, I yeah. will. Okay, well, we sure, might sure, we'll look sure. into that. At the moment, they don't know whether they can sell it, so I don't want to get involved in it just yet. If and when they do sell it, I hope they're cool. The Russian icon may not be for sale, but if this is typical of the historical items down here, Drew's expert eye is bound to spot other antiques worth bidding on. These are rather nice, like the finish to them. So we have um, yeah, we have a pair of these ones. In memory of Margaret Alice, daughter of N. G. Rector, January 1920. It's really nice. It's quite nice. It's just a flower vase, um, but of good shape. And then there's a pair. There is an inscription in full on the base of one of the vases and in part on the other. The inscription tells you of the story of the piece, why it was made. So the nice decorative piece with a little bit of history. This is a, an applied finish. Right, right. And then it's got sort of a very, very beautifully done pewter infill. Mm. See it? Mm, yes, yes, I do. This pair of lacquered brass vases dates from 1920 and carries a dedication in memorial of a local rector's daughter. The sides were hand-pressed and worked before being soldered to the base in a style common to the period. In need of minimal restoration work, they could be worth around £250. I think the most I can give you for those would be... I think I can get just over 200 quid for them. Yeah. Um, maybe 250. So I would mm. give you 150. Seems fair. Yeah. Is that one all right? That seems fair to me. Um, OK, thank you. OK. They're, they're nice little things, you know, nice things. The size really makes them. And if you imagine them in a in the middle of a big kitchen table with some white flowers in, they'd look really beautiful. Drew wants to head back up to the nave, where something caught his eye on the way in. So you've got these chairs here. Yes, And these yes. here. Yeah. Tell me about these. These are lovely. Well, I, they are. They're, they're quite unusual, aren't they? I mean, I, I actually don't know much about them. I mean, we certainly... We would be prepared to part with a couple of them, but we, we do use... Uh, we do use them. I'm trying to find a maker's mark on them because I'm thinking if there's somebody a, put these together. There's a, something there, isn't there? Is that, is that a signature? Oh, there you go. I'll put my glasses monogram. on. There you yeah, go. Helps, <laughs> yeah. SMC. 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 St Mary's Cathedral. <laughs> I think you might be onto something there. <laughs> yeah. Um, They're nice, aren't they? <clears throat> the more I look at them, the better they get, actually. Mm, mm. So, they're surprisingly mm. comfortable. Are they? they are really comfortable. We, we you end up just... doing this because they're, they're so tactile. Yeah, yeah. Surprise, surprise, some chairs have caught my eye. They're a different design, for sure. The, the X-frame and the base and everything, I really like the base. Um, the armrests and back uh, rest are... They're a bit chunky. They're not quite as stylish as the rest of the chair, but they sort of work. Very nice, modern, light colour to them as well, uh, with a nice, perfect provenance. They've even got it stamped underneath. The altar chairs were commissioned especially for St Mary's Cathedral and date from the 1960s. Simply constructed of beautiful light oak, they were used every Sunday for prayers. Two of the 12 chairs are for sale, and as a pair, could fetch around six hundred pounds. So I'm thinking three hundred pounds for a pair, that and I'd be fair. happy. That's fair. That sounds fair. Yeah. yeah. They are very comfy. Very as see, we sit in them every Sunday, so I, I can vouch for their comfortableness. <laughs> Hello. 
Having secured two pieces with excellent provenance, it's time for T to load the van. There is an enduring appeal for e ecclesiastical antiques. The one thing that you do get from buying from these ecclesiastical buildings and from churches, wh or whatever it is, is you get perfect provenance if you've got a piece that is designed for that building initially. I've enjoyed showing the guys around and uh, speaking a bit about the, the about the building and its history and and oh, it's always great to discover some new things about some of the some of the features of the cathedral and to learn a bit about, bit more about about some of the some of the objects we have here. So it's been it's been a really good day, really enjoyable. It was very reassuring that that, that Drew gave us a, a, a very clear um, understanding of, of, of why he he gave us the, the price that he did for each of the objects. Not bad. That's Glasgow Scottish, that is. Edinburgh's like a little bit more like this. It was a fantastic day. Are you going to have this accent all the way back? Oi. Now, these uh, were made ah. for... These were made for the cathedral. Oh, I love They're marked it. underneath St. Mary's Cathedral. Right. Paid 300 quid for the pair. It is quite unusual to come back with items that have been specifically made for that church, cathedral, whatever. Um, it does happen, and um, this is the proof, that sometimes their items are surplus to requirements. That we love. Really, really nice pair of um, large flat, uh, flower mm. vases. I like those. Aren't they good? Mm. Gav, just wipe their face, please. I just like the colour. I like the colour. I think the colour's the best bit. You've got to imagine them in a, in a nice, bright white kitchen full of flowers. Mm. They look fantastic. So give them a wipe and get them straight online. So that was all we got from there, really. from there, yeah. That was the lot.
century saints um, from the Byzantine period. But, oh, hang on, we've got a name up here, haven't we? Saint Demetrius, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, we're not quite sure exactly who. But the inscription on the back... Bought from a Russian church during the Red Revolution in 1917 by a Greek merchant. Mm, mm, mm. It's all a bit sketchy, isn't yeah. it? Very sketchy, yeah. very sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. Antique dealer Drew Pritchard is at St Mary's Cathedral in the Scottish capital of Edinburgh. 